This is the Holy Grail Marble Divider. It divides marbles from one lane to many lanes and it is using a really cool design trick to do so. These wiggly tracks here are not wiggly just for fun. The shape of these tracks is there for a very important reason. At each of these crossroads the marble can choose to go either left or right depending on which track has free space. The marble chooses to go into the empty track that have played more notes and therefore needs more marbles, which is important for a musical marble machine. But for these crossroads to work properly, this marble here need to be positioned at the perfect position. If it's too high, the incoming marble won't have the space to fill the empty channel. And if it's too low, the next marble gets stuck and no other marbles can come through. And that's where these wiggly tracks comes in. The geometry of the wiggly tracks creates a super cool rubber band effect on the marble queue. When I'm lowering the lowest marble here, watch how the top marble doesn't even move. The marble at the top is completely still. Until I lower the lowest marble with enough distance, then the top marble moves in a complete step leaving the perfect room for the next marble. This rubber band effect is really magic to me. Such a simple design with zero moving parts that does this marble dividing job perfectly. I've designed several much more complicated marble dividers than this, but this simple design is beating them all. And fun fact is that this design was suggested to me by my viewers. We have found it. The Holy Grail Marble Divider. But the Holy Grail Marble Divider has a major flaw. It makes a lot of noise. Listen to this. That's a lot of noise. Could I use some kind of rubber to dampen the sound perhaps? Or some kind of foam? The issue with these soft materials is how can I trust that the marble tracks would function well? I'm really scared of gluing these soft materials in and the glue letting go or the foam starting to disintegrate over time being hit by marble. So I didn't like any of these ideas. Rubber or foam, it doesn't feel like world tour ready materials. But then I heard about this soft 3D printable material called TPU. TPU is a soft bendable material. I can crumble this print into a ball and when I release, it comes back to its original shape. Perhaps I could use TPU to make the marble tracks silent. I talked to Bamboo Lab about this idea and asked them if they wanted to sponsor the Marble Machine project and they kindly said yes and sent me the X1C printer that can print TPU and a lot of other high performance engineering filaments. I've never used a Bamboo Lab printer before so I thought it would be a fun idea to take the time it took for me from unpacking to the first test prints. Assembly was half an hour and then I downloaded and synced all the software. I did some of these initial printer configurations where the machine kind of sinks. And then I had the first Benji test print after one hour and 40 minutes and it looked great right out of the box. Then I printed my first custom print, a stand for the timer and I also learned how to record these time lapses. Yeah, it looks fantastic. Yeah, wow. I design most of my prints myself, but if you're new to 3D printing and want to print cool stuff without designing them, you can find a lot of cool stuff at makerworlds.com. Will it work? Perfection. <laughs> so from the cardboard box to custom part is two hours and 15 minutes. The first thing I want to try is to compare the sound of a PLA track to the sound of a TPU track. So I printed some straight tracks in matte white PLA and red TPU and attached them both on the same piece of wood. Let's listen to the PLA track and here's the TPU track one more time PLA TPU I think we have a winner but this is just one single track let's multiply these tracks to see how they really sounds on the full scale machine first PLA then TPU
this is where the difference really comes through. The TPU is actually doing a fantastic job reducing the noise already. So I went on to print the full marble divider in both PLA and TPU so that we can compare that. But when I was going to test the function, the dreaded floor marbles appeared yet again. No, always. Sorry, I have to see this. I started to think about some simple marble gate that would help me avoid these situations. And I modeled this simple design in on shape, and then I printed it in gray TPU, and they work great. Just push the gate to the side to let marbles through, and when you release it, the TPU will flex back to close the gate. Okay, now we're ready to listen to the full comparison. Yes, this worked. However, this red color makes it look very plasticky. I don't want my Renaissance marble machine to look like it's made out of plastic. So we have to work with that. And looks wise, I really love the colors on my original marble machine. We had birch plywood and we had metal colored hardware parts. And then we had gray plastic parts. So to mimic that, I ordered the same TPU 95A HF in gray. And I think this color is really close to the gray color I used on the original machine. So then I come to think, is there a way that I can get the best out of both worlds? Plywood marble tracks, but with TPU sound? I started to think about that and I came up with this system. The darker 3D printed track here is just a placeholder. This will be plywood on the real machine. But then, thanks to these indents on the plywood tracks and these bumps on the TPU tracks, I can squeeze the TPU track into the plywood track. So we have a plywood track lined with soft TPU. I really like this idea of mechanically locking the TPU part in place, no glue needed and easy to repair and replace. We can even cover up screws underneath the TPU lining like this. Once this dark portion here will be made of real plywood, I think these tracks will look amazing. But how do they sound? Let's compare. Best looking solution also sounds the best. I made this test track in plywood to see how this looks and I really love the look of this. I hand cut the parts, sanded them and glued them together and I was reminded how much I love working with plywood. But this track is not only looking nice, it's actually taking things one step further. The marble is meeting the track at three spots, here, here, and here. And to reduce the sound even more, I sanded away material in these three areas. So when the marble moves to the left, to the right, or down, the TPU can flex much more, and the track will be even more silent. This is the way. Even Wilson thinks this looks great. 3D printing is amazing for prototypes, but the X1C can print advanced engineering filaments as well, which allows me to make real parts for my marble machine that I would trust on a world tour. This marble gate here drops marbles in a controlled way. I printed some parts for this marble gate in an extremely cool material called PPACF. I'm removing the old PLA parts and replacing them with PPA-CF parts. And the PPA has way better dimensional stability, heat resistance and strength. And it's a huge difference when squeezing the parts with your hand. PLA budges, PPA-CF does not. Printing PPA-CF was easier than I thought. It should be dried before use and I used the print bed of the printer for drying, which is a great function, but not the best solution as it takes up the printer for some time. And I'm waiting for an AMS HT dryer that is compatible with the X1. But until it arrives, the print bed works great. I changed nozzle size to the recommended 0.6 and used a glue stick for bed adhesion as the instructions told me, and the prints came out great first run. And as you can see here, I have moved the printer into a well-isolated room far away from my desk, as you should be extra careful with air quality when printing carbon fiber filaments. 
Now the most important parts of the Marble Gate is printed in PPA CF and I trust them for a world tour and it's a great feeling that with these advanced engineering filaments that I can make my own parts and not only prototypes. And PPA CF is only one of many materials that the printer can print. It's a great feeling. I have several other ideas of how I can use TPU to make the sound of the Marble Machine better. For example, I want to make dynamic vibraphone sound. I already tried this earlier with rubber bands that I lowered and hired in this video. So this is the sound without the rubber bands. And here is the more dynamic sound with the rubber bands. But instead of using rubber band, I'm printing a softer 85A green TPU print. And to test this piece, I'm building a test rig. The screws are scraping the table, so I printed some feet for the screws real fast. Screw. Perfect. So the improvised TPU feet came out perfect. It's also standing still now because of the extra friction. I move it out. I think that's our counterbalance. On this design, the wall is thicker here and thinner here. So if we rotate like this and the marble hits there, you have very thin amount of material between the marble and the vibraphone, which is a loud sound. And if we rotate over here, this should be a soft sound. Wanna hear how it sounds without this? That's not at all desirable. Let's start with softer. I'm rotating this. Now we should have a softer sound. Did you hear? Did you hear that? What? And now the programming track goes for a harder note in the music. This is very important. So go a little bit more to the middle. I rotated it and Yes! Let's go for the hardest. Wow! TPU! But... The bar is touching this. I put a tiny screw right here. So, when the vibraphone bar comes up, this tiny screw is pushing the TPU print up. Okay, now... So good! Did you see that? Eight years later, my friends, and we're here now! Who would have thought this could go so quickly forward, this project? I do long to show you some clean designs. These are, these are rough prototypes, I know. I know this is what my work has looked like for like eight years. Let's go from soft to hard. It totally works. The TPU makes the vibraphone sounds better. It makes the marbles transport completely silent, but it can also do other great stuff. On the machine, we will have a lot of mechanical stops. Shook, did you hear that sound? Without TPU, with TPU, I made these tiny, tiny stoppers and they have a mount in place for a screw. So we can design and print our own small little stoppers like this. 
It's been great fun working with the X1C printer. I have an idea and I can just get it out in the real world immediately. And I think Bamboo Lab printer specifically has been a workhorse, kind of plug and play. The parts comes out instantly. So I can focus on the progress and the parts and not on the process. Although TPU is a bit difficult to print. So I had to go through a kind of a learning curve to get great TPU prints on the printer. The first issue I noticed was this wave pattern here and the printer was standing on an extremely unstable surface and I know that that can cause these kinds of patterns from vibrations. So I moved the printer to a sturdy surface and here is the before and after. The sturdy surface made a huge difference. Secondly, I had quite a lot of stringing, a common issue for TPU. TPU is hygroscopic, it absorbs moisture from the air and the filament prints better when dried out. So I dried the filament and loaded the filament from the top of the printer. The shorter filament path means less resistance for the soft TPU. I printed with the top and the door open for better cooling and I increased retraction length and retraction speed and I also slowed down overall print speed. And here is the before and after on the stringing, it's completely gone. Finally, I had an embarrassing and super stupid issue. These ugly bubbles on the side started to appear suddenly and I thought the bubbles was caused by wet filament, so I dried the filament for an entire night. But the next print had very similar bubbles and I had no clue what this could be. Until I looked closer and I saw that the bubbles wasn't only similar, they were identical. Which means this is an issue in the slicer and not with the printing. Turns out I had forgotten that I experimented with the seam setting on random. So basically what we're looking at here is just a super bad positioning of seams. Changing back the setting eliminated these mysterious bubbles and I got to eat a lot of humble pie on this one. Looks like I finally nailed it. Look at this. It's actually shiny. Nice. Since I made these changes, all the TPU prints have looked great. And it's really nice to see the trickier TPU prints looking as sharp as the simpler PLA prints. I'm out biking and I can keep track of the print live here on my phone. And I can see that the 85A TPU print is actually going good. So it's really nice that I can control it from afar. In summary, I am super impressed by this machine. I could easily recommend this machine for you. But I also want to acknowledge that there has been some criticism from the open source 3D printing community regarding the effects of certain firmware updates. And CNC Kitchen made a great video about the topic where Stefan discussed the topic with Bamboo Lab CEO. I'll leave a link to that video in the description. I want to say a huge thank you to Bamboo Lab for sponsoring the Marble Machine project. This machine will help me make my dream come true. And if you are looking for Bamboo Lab products yourself, I'll leave my affiliate links in the description. Using them will also support the Marble Machine project. I'm here in my Stockholm studio. I have great view with birds outside my window. I'm going to build Marble Machine 3 in this place. I'm delighted to actually have a place to work. I've been moving way too much. A huge thanks to all the Wintergatan backers who have chosen to support the work we're doing here. Wilson, me, Aluminium Wilson and Hannes say thank you. It means the world to us. Good luck with everything you're doing and see you on the next one. Ciao!